Yo, what's going on guys, Jordan here. Welcome back to another Redstone video. And, uh, in, oh, that's too many F5s. In this video, you can see that I am in front of my, uh, triple piston extender from last episode. And I definitely know ways that I can fix that now. And I'll get to that in a sec. But before this episode starts, I want to actually talk about something, uh, that's going to happen on the Dreamcraft server. So if you saw episode one of that server, you'd know that about, uh, all the Venetron heads that are going all around the server, just kind of everywhere. And I'm probably going to have a clip on screen now of, like, an example of them. Uh, you'd also know that they constantly flip between e-girls and knights. And so, in a couple of days, unclear when, but I'll let you know in advance, uh, I'm going to be streaming myself, just kind of watching the Venetron heads and seeing if I can capture on stream when they flip between eagles and knights because I am a dumbass who likes wasting his time with dumb projects like this as you can see by this stupid machine here as well as that no nope, not that one that machine over there <laughs> so uh in this episode in this redstone video I wanted to continue the trend of trying to build a machine without using a redstone tutorial and this time I want to do a combination lock but before I do that I know of a way that I can make a monostable circuit, a falling age monostable circuit, much better using observers. So here we have a rising edge monostable circuit. So it's off right now. You turn it on and it makes a one tick pulse. Turn it off, there's no one tick pulse, no effort. I think if I just do this, it becomes a falling edge, right? Start of it, no output. End of it. It does that. Interesting. So we have the inverter like before. This time it's off. Turn it on, no rest output. Turn it off, and you get a redstone output for one tick. Perfect. That's what we want. Okay. All right, so I also learned that in order for it to pull, in order for a piston to pull another piston back, there needs to be two ticks of delay between them. So this needs to be two ticks, which means this one needs to go four ticks, which is... What? Wait, how did I do this? Okay, yeah, four ticks. Okay, I'm not foolish. Um, I also learned that this one can retract at the same time as this one, because it just can. Okay, shut up. And I think I've already done that. So that's four ticks plus two ticks, which is six. And that's four plus two, which is six. Then this one retracts after eight ticks, which means the last one is over the wrong block. <laughs> and so this last one would have eight ticks of delay total, I believe. So it's two, then four, then six and six, then eight, then 10. Yep, okay. And so by all accounts, this should work. Ooh, that was weird. Oh, I didn't account for the tick delay from here, okay. In that case, I think this should work as well. That did work, and it also took a bit too. Okay, that's two ticks. Then that's one tick delay. That's also one tick delay. So, I guess if we make this two ticks, I wonder if this will work. It does, and that's the fastest I can make it. That's also definitely the most compact I can make it, personally. And it doesn't actually look too bad. I don't need these blocks. It doesn't actually look too bad. Like, it looks really compact. It's a whole lot more compact than it was at the end of last episode. The only reason that I figured this out was because I saw a redstone video in which this falling edge monostable circuit was used. Actually, I think it was used as a rising edge, but I made it a falling edge using an inverter like I did with the other rising edge. Um... 
but yeah, I did see this uh, monocycle circuit used, and so I was able to realize, hey, that's probably a better design than what I had in this build, which was correct. <laughs> but at least it all functions. Everything is so much more neat and compact and small and tiny, and it's great. And I think I can actually do this to cheat a little bit. And so now I saved even another block. Actually, another three blocks along this axis. Let's see if this works. Hey! <laughs> this is the most compact I can make it. There's no way I'm going smaller. Anyway, with that out the way, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build a wall. And on this wall, there's going to be nine buttons. Now, four of these buttons, pushed in the correct order, is going to open a door. This video is not about a fancy door, so I'm just using an iron door. I also pushed it back a block so that I can have redstone go into... I think if redstone goes into here, then it works, right? I should probably test this. It does. Okay, cool. Now... This is definitely going to be the output. The input is going to be four of these nine buttons, and they need to be pushed in the right order. That's the challenge. No redstone tutorials allowed. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so I think what needs to happen is I need a T flip flop after each one, but each T flip flop cannot be activated unless the previous one has been activated. So what that means is I actually need to revert a T flip flop, I think. I want it to deactivate the redstone signal so that it can unlock a repeater, which allows redstone to go through in the next line. All right, I'm going to try that. Okay, this works as a monostable circuit. So you push this button. Whoop, shit, you push this button. It activates this. When the button deactivates, this does not activate. So the next step is to turn that into a T flip flop. And I think this is all we need, I think. Let's see. Yep, that powers it, and then... That depowers it. Perfect! I have decided to scratch the entire design. Well, it's just a dual-edge monostable circuit again. Unless... No, the reason that wasn't working was because it was... actually changing state, not changing power. Duh. All right. Ooh, that does work. Fascinating. What if I were to turn that into a repeater? Oh, fuck, repeater. Yes, that also works in the monostable circuit. Okay. Now, the idea of this is to make it entirely stackable so that you can have whatever combination you want. If you can't guess what co what combination I'm going for, then uh, there's a bit of a problem there. <laughs> so how this should work is we should already be able to open the door by pressing 1 and then 2. Yep. <laughs> and then if we want to close it again, we press 2 and then 1. And that resets the thing. All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can also open the door by going 2, and then 1, which is not what we want. Now, as I said, what I want to happen is I want it to not be able to activate the redstone signal unless it's pressed in the right order. So, I'm going to break my own rule and uh, not use the uh, the thingy madu guy. I know what I meant. Not make it stackable, is what I meant to say. So now, if I press 2, it won't open. If I press 1, it still won't open. But now that I've pressed 1, if I press 2 again, it don't open. The fuck? Okay, figured it out. So now, I press 2. Nothing happens. But if I press 1, and then 2, whoa, it opens! 
So, uh, good news, it's not going to be tileable, and also, I've changed the uh, combination, because I can't think of any way to make it work using 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> I can see no reason that this wouldn't work. These are very foolish words to say while you're making a redstone contraption. <laughs> But, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's technically an AND gate. So, when these two are powered, that powers this one. When these two are powered, that powers this one. When these are both powered, it's going to... Oh, uh, shit. It's going to depower this one. Which... Is going to get inverted here. And therefore, it's going to open the door. Now, this works because this one is powering this repeater, which is blocking this piss, this repeater, which is disallowing this to move, which continues the sequence. Um, I also need that to do the same for the other side. I need that to do the same for the other side. That's a problem, but I can fix that problem by just kind of doing something like this. No, not like that. Like that. Come on, come on. Yes! Alright, I don't need this one anymore either. I can see no reason that this won't work. So if we go one, two, ah, uh, <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay, so this doesn't work as an AND gate. What I need is to immediately run this into an inverter. Then pump this one into the AND gate. They depower that redstone torch, right? Surely. No. No, that doesn't work either. So everything's been reset. These are all back in their original positions. So these are both off, which means this doesn't give a redstone output. This one also doesn't give a redstone output. Now, we want it so that when they both do give a redstone oh, excuse me, output, then that makes the line work. So, we just want another AND gate, right? Now this should work. So we go one, two, Nine, eight. Fuck. That's odd, but okay. What if I do this? That inverts them, okay. Yeah, that'd explain why it wasn't working. So, uh, just to clarify to myself, the combination is one, two, and then using one D powers nine, and using 9 should depower 8, right? Yeah, using 9 depowers 8. So it's 1, 2, 9, 8. 1, 2, 9, 8. Okay, cool. And to close, we have to go 8, 9, 2, 1. And that should work. Yeah. Alright, I've only been recording for 45 minutes, so I'm going to see if I can... Uh, make my own reset button as well. <laughs> Alright, so in theory this should actually be stupid easy, because all you have to do is just power the repeaters using a button. Oh, not the repeaters, the pistons. Because if they're extended, then... or rather, if the blocks are out, then they'll just get pulled back in, because it's a sticky piston. If they're in, then it'll just push them out, then pull it back in, because it's a sticky piston. The only reason it's leaving them out uh, in this design is because that it's using monostable circuits. And that's how T-flip-flops work. <laughs> so, it should really just be as simple as just powering these guys. Which is a lot easier said than done, now that I look at it. So that should power that piston.
Yep, that's nice. Oh, but <laughs> if I do that, it'll open the door. <laughs> I didn't consider this. So we also want it to lock a repeater somewhere. Probably this one. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. You want a redstone line there? That shouldn't be activated by anything. It's running dangerously close. But that doesn't matter because I can just buff this out. Just to be safe, I'm going to put a pulse extender here. Just to be 100% sure that there's absolutely no way that uh, anything can happen in a way that I don't expect it to. Huh. That did not extend the pulse as much as I expected it to. Oh wait, no, door. <laughs> because the redstone power here is fucking weak as shit. Okay. There is absolutely no way that I should ever be able to open the door. But I don't trust it anyway. Alright, now there is absolutely no way that it should be able to <laughs> open the door. Dust, 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 dust. And then, repeater, put a block, and repeater. So that way, it'll activate both of those guys, and it'll deactivate both of those guys. It also does something weird with the other things, but that doesn't matter for the purpose of the reset button. Okay, so I'm pretty sure if I do this, and then put redstone here, if I power this redstone, uh, it should activate the repeaters. Yep. Yes, it does. The pistons, rather. Okay. That's good. So, in theory, all I have to do is just run a redstone line over the top of this. Wait. I have this... I have this here. If I just... Will that do? Oh my god, it does. Ha! So this is the last one we have unpowered, right? I believe so. And it's definitely going to be the hardest to power. So what I'm thinking is, we can use the fact that uh, repeaters allow signals to go through blocks to have it go over this line without interrupting it. Straight through. And so we have, it'll also do the same, whoop, the same thing over this line without interrupting it. And I'm going to test this theory by clicking this button. And if it opens the doors, that means it doesn't work. Now, this is the wire to deactivate this. So if I connect this wire to that wire, that should work? Question mark? Oh dear god. And there should be no reason this doesn't work. It looks like utter chaos. But... Wh why? Why is that one not worth firing? Why? Oh my god, I know exactly why. Okay, that's an easy fix. What I do... Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Ha ha ha! Yes. No, I just really... Fuck. Okay. That's fine, I can fix this. Just kinda do that, do that. Do, 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 do. This should work. <laughs> If I press this but if I press this button, all four should fire. All four did fire. Oh my god, fuck this. The last one lags behind, but it does work. So now if I go one, two, nine, eight. 
the door opens, I press this button. The door closes. Did everything reset? Everything did reset. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was <laughs> so weird. Look at this. This is utter chaos. This is so much worse than my stupid little triple piston extender over here. <laughs> but the good news is, it fucking works. So now, if you want to get into my combo with the doors, you know that my combination's gotta be 1, 2, 9, 8. Because I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> Reset that and just wander through, because it's gonna take fucking ages to close. However, if you do the wrong combination... Blah, 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 blah. And then you reset it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't open. Anyways, guys, I'm going to leave this episode here. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like. If you didn't like it, then I don't like you. Make sure to subscribe. I'm going to go watch some tutorials on how to make combination locks so I can actually use them without having to do 1, 2, 9, 8. Like a moron. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Goodbye!